There's something missing in the way that we are organizing as a culture and the way that we're supporting individuals in development. So our work is really about kind of an integrative whole person development that focuses on the development of self-compassion. Within the field of mind-body medicine and psychoneuroimmunology is looking at psychology, the nervous system, neuroscience, and the immune system, and how these three aspects itself are really impacted by an integrative whole person approach. We educate the teachers on how to be there and help students and themselves really develop and flourish socially and emotionally. The work that we do came from a group of practitioners, healthcare providers, mental health counselors, social workers, yoga instructors, for individuals to practice a greater sense of compassion and fully kind of self-compassion. One of the things that we can do is we are capable of rewiring our brain with neuroplasticity. So techniques like biofeedback give us up to the minute information about what's going on in our body, like our heart rate and our respiration rate. And to know that we can actively control those things as a way to help relax or decrease our stress is really empowering for people to be able to do that. And now there's more and more research showing the specific things that we can do and how that can impact our, not only our overall health and well-being, but also can help to prevent the possibility of developing chronic illness or dis-ease in our life. Playing instruments, playing music, drum circles, helps us connect to our sense of creativity and to a sense of play that everyone has, but that for a variety of reasons we might lose or get disconnected from. Food is everything. We learn you are what you eat as a young child, and you know we don't really put it together how literal that metaphor is, but I really believe that food affects everything about us, not just physically, but also affects our thoughts, our moods, our choice. And in this work with the teachers, we're really talking about connecting food with their lives, how it's affecting their lives and how they can be empowered to change their lives and change the reality that they experience every day just by the food choices they make. I'd like to thank Josh and all the interns and volunteers for helping me become a better teacher, a better person. I find each time I come to these sessions, it's just out of the realm of what I normally do. I truly feel so wonderful to be here and to be in nature. Yes, we are learning, but at the same time you are connecting at a deeper level with the nature. I feel like this was a great way to, to segue into the year. I'd also say I really love being around people that just want to help children. To be able to really practice compassion in the world outward, we have to be able to bring that compassion internal as well. So a lot of our work is really about using mind-body medicine, humanistic psychology, critical theories, critical pedagogies, compassion training as a way to help support the compassion of self. That way we can bring that compassion and experience that compassion in the world at greater levels. Today's work is really focused on the fact that we are thinking, feeling, moving, relational, and spiritual beings. And if any area of our, our life is disrupted or not supported in the development, it has an impact on our overall wellness and our health and our ability to interact and relate with each other. It's always difficult to try to quantify or assign any kind of a numerical value to the emotional experiences of people, the social-emotional learning results of being partaking in a lot of our programs, but it enables us to be able to not only assess our effectiveness in education and other facets of what we do, but also it's an opportunity for us to contribute to the field and contribute to the body of work that currently surrounds emotional intelligence and its significance in workplace uh, performance, family life, education, and so much more. The way that people learn and being able to develop better ways for people to learn I think are really helpful. So Project Presence really focuses on being able to teach mindful awareness and presence and actually living some of the practices so it can teach children at various ages to practice awareness skills and help them to slow down and tune in and pay attention and also as a result of that be able to have a more positive experience in their learning so it may actually provide 
an opportunity for them to learn more and have a better educational experience. And I look at it that education to me is inspiring. So it's about trying to be able to, no matter what the age group is, just to be able to figure out what is someone passionate about? What are they interested in learning more about? And that can become like the foundation of their educational experience in their life. And Project Presence really takes a look at how we can actively take part in that as educators and professionals to consciously do that. Every year, the results are more outstanding to me. I've seen amazing physical transformations, people letting go of toxic relationships, standing up for themselves, and also creating a, a healthier environment just with food for themselves. I really hope that Project Presence can continue to grow. I think that we're just doing such important work Given what's going on in the world these days, it's really important for people to be able to feel connected and that has to start with kids. It has to start and grow in schools because it's a great thing to give to adults later on, but doing the work with the students, with the teachers, is where it's really needed right now, I feel. And so I'm just really passionate about doing this work and about helping this work grow.